Hello everybody, my name is Joe Shelton and I'm a singer, songwriter, music producer, and recording artist from Indianapolis, Indiana. Over the last year, I've stepped out and performed music on over 200 stages. Along the way though, I met a lot of great people that I didn't expect to. They were inspiring artists and songwriters and musicians, and I want to share all of that inspiration with you. So that's what this show is about. Moonshine equals love, shine and love on the music. Moonshine and music starts now. Everybody. Welcome to Moonshine and Music. We're here with the Hammer and the Hatchet. Hi. This is Jamie and John. Hi. Hello. Hi Joe, good to see you. It's good to see you guys. Um, have you been uh, watching the show? Have you got any uh, secret insights that you've been gleaning from it? Well, if it's a secret, I'm not going to tell you. Oh. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we have been watching the show. Yeah, well, yeah. that's good. I'm enjoying what you're doing. Uh, yeah. All right, well, thank yeah. you. Um, well, I was just asking that because generally we try to get to know everybody. Mm -hmm. So, so I always feel like the way to get to know people is to start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So where'd you guys, you know, originate from? Where'd you grow up? Stuff. Um, well, I was born and raised in farm country, 50 miles north of uh, Indianapolis in Carroll County. Um, my dad's fourth generation farmer on our land there. And uh, so that was my upbringing. So you were a farmer as a child? I detasseled as my first job. Does that count? Yes. Okay. I would. Right, that seems cut. very challenging. Yeah. I had friends that did that. I, I was always like, no, dude, I'm out. The like, first year I did it because I thought I was right, and the second year I did it because I knew I was wrong. You know, my parents <laughs> told me I would never survive, so I just went ahead and did it a second time. <laughs> well, survival during corn detasseling is definitely the first goal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do they let you drink water? At all? Because I've heard stories. Only of, at the end of the row. No. <laughs> yeah, that's about how it goes. <laughs> is it recording? It is. Welcome to Moonshine and Music. We have the hammer and the hatchet on the show today. Okay. And that's <laughs> Jamie and John. <laughs> this is take two for those of you who didn't see that. But yeah. So we started talking about you know your backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And um, you're uh, a farmer. You grew up on a farm. My dad's a farmer. Your My dad's grandpa a farmer. was a farmer. My grandpa's dad was a farmer, yeah. <laughs> so like everybody was a farmer and you broke the chain after you corn to tasseled. Um, yeah, or a school teacher. Yeah, that's pretty much or school the, teacher. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what we do in Flatlands. It's uh, I teaching see. kids. Or, yeah. um, so are you a, you're a school teacher now? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> no? <laughs> homeschool, right? I did homeschool my kids, so I guess. Oh, that, well, then you are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, um, uh, they're they're grown adults now. They're 19 and 21, so uh, that's, oh. that's, but we survived, so. So uh, tell me, uh, you know, we can back back up to the farm. You, sure. you You were saying, and, you know, we lost the film footage, so we have to do this over, but you were saying that you were a corn detasseler when you were a kid? Yes. So um, did you do any other farm-related activities, or were you, like, dragged out into, like, you know, what's, what's the good story? There's got to be one under there. Well, I mean, I'll... I'll say that my mom, I was small and my mom kind of wanted me to be like a girly girl and I was really into farm stuff, doing things with my hands, making things. So uh, one of my favorite memories is my dad teaching me to weld when I was about nine. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, it was really, really awesome. He taught me how to like fix some parts on the tractor, you know. Um, but that was just kind of how it was. Uh, my dad and I were inseparable for a really long time. Well, I love that idea. So, like, you had to wear the mask and everything? Yeah. See, I always wanted to wear the mask, but not necessarily do the work. Yeah. There's, there's a picture around somewhere. I keep trying to talk my mom to digging it up. It's like, you know, me, pigtails, welding mask, filthy face, you know. Well, I think the welding mask thing might make a good album cover. Like, just come on and looking vicious in a welding mask. I yeah, know. I try and keep my, my image, you know, legit yeah. like that. Yeah, I'm tough. Well, are you the hammer or the hatchet? Which one? She's a sharp one. 
You owe him a dollar. Because <laughs> you, you, know, you get asked that every time. All the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, that's that's. Uh, uh, I, I thought it was a prerequisite that I was going to have to ask that. Yeah. Or, 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 or everybody's going to go, why are they called the hammer and the hatchet? Which one's the hammer and which one's that? See, that's. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, we weren't necessarily clearly, trying to give ourselves. Uh, nicknames. No, um, no. Yeah. I had to, I had an idea for the band name for a minute, and then um, when I met Jamie, um, we started. You know, she sang harmony with me at a party one night at the Boyd's house, man cave, man cave, and uh, <laughs> man cave, and, uh, and I was like, "That's it, you're mine." You know, and then one too long after that, we got booked at a, a show in Irvington, and. Uh, we went and played it, and, or went to play it, and the guy, you know, introduced us and said, "What's your band name?" And that's what I blurted out. And that's what it's been ever since. It's that's perfect. Right. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. We've grown into it. So you, uh, where did you grow up? I grew up uh, outside of Pendleton, uh, right on the Hancock County, Madison County line, on a little 40-acre farm there as well. So we both kind of have that in common. So did you also corn to tassel? I didn't corn to tassel, no. But I, I, got I, out I started too. working when I was 13, though. I started oh. roofing houses, actually, when I was wow. 13. So That's yeah, hard. I went right into the construction end of things, like framing and and stuff. I used to have to tar roofs. My dad owned a bunch of rental properties, uh, and like you know, there were flat roofs on some of them. Yeah. That's like the worst job ever. Yeah, like having to tar the roof. If, if that stuff's up within a mile of me, I get roofing tar on me. <laughs> Just not just kind of on just me. Comes to like, me. Yeah. Is it, like <laughs> it feels like I just live in tar, yeah. and then I have to be like showered in gasoline yeah. to get it off. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that's a rough stuff. That roofing thing. So you started when you were 13. Yeah, yeah, doing tear offs and stuff with my neighbor Dan Humphrey. And uh, so see, there's the hammer thing because you had to like hammer in. <laughs> yeah, the... I, yeah, I've been swinging a hammer for a really long time <laughs> as a kid. That's true. <laughs> well, that's yeah. killer. Yeah. So um, when you guys. You, you said you uh, started playing at the Irving, but I'm guessing that was later on. How long have you guys been a group? Well, it'll be it's coming up on five years now. In June or July, June or July, it'll be five <laughs> years. Yeah, um, and uh, when we started dating, I didn't play an instrument and I didn't sing. Um, we, I was not a musician before I met John. Now I did grow up playing classical piano. That was a requisite for our household. My grandparents thought it was very important. So, so we played piano, but um, uh, never had any designs on playing on a stage or writing my own songs in this sort of capacity. So it's been a pretty fun ride the last few years. So when did you start playing? Because it uh, sounds like you so forced her into it. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's all his fault. It's really, <laughs> I would say 13, but really kind of before that. My, um, somewhere in there, my oldest sister showed up back home from college, and she had a little airline acoustic in her room, and I'd, I'd sneak over there and, and steal it from her. <laughs> she wasn't home. <laughs> and, but I, I used to bang around on piano and stuff like that a lot as a kid, and just um, just kind of funny because I didn't really think about it, really. And then it's like one day, you know, just kind of dawned on me that, oh, I just want to play music. That's what I want to do. You know, I just I made a lot of racket on buckets and things and stuff as a kid and just thought I was playing. Not really, you know, wasn't really thinking about being a musician. And then it was just kind of, kind of in my blood, really, yeah, I think. But I, I've got some pretty good family history with that, really. My, my, my grandma, she played organ and piano and church band, so I grew up listening to her play organ in church all the time. And then uh, my mom's great uncle played jazz around IU same time Hoagie Carmichael did so oh, and wow. my grandpa also had a little Wurlitzer jazz piano too so uh, yeah and my oldest sister played piano so I was around music way more than I would have would have thought you know just it's funny I didn't really I wasn't really like plopped down and said you're gonna be a musician no it just kind of came out so uh, you know I it's interesting to me that you grew up with like a lot of jazz and classical uh, in your backgrounds, but your music doesn't sound anything well, like Well, I didn't really classical. know about that side of things until later, really, you know. Um, it's kind of funny. Yeah, I just, when I first started playing guitar, really, like still my sister's guitar, I didn't know anything about it. So I was just kind of playing with my fingers and things. And so I think there I kind of got a pretty good attachment to acoustic music, and I didn't even really realize it. Because once I got an electric guitar for Christmas, it was heavy metal and punk rock all the way. <laughs> That's the direction that I was at. Right. And then I come back into playing acoustic music. 
And then I learned more about jazz. <laughs> so <laughs> let's so were you some, but I don't play jazz. Were you in some bands when you were younger? Or? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And all that what, stuff was What was your first band? band came. Uh, King Mama was probably, well, there was others. There was Spontaneous Human Combustion, I guess. See, school. that's a we killer played, name. We yeah, we, uh, we played a high school talent show. And then there's King Mama. Spontaneous um, Human Combustion may be the record for the most violent first band name that we've had on Moonshine <laughs> Music. Yes. There you go, man. Yeah. You, you may have set that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that I mean, far. you know, Great. probably not the level of uh, th that's that even may <laughs> exceed the level of violence talked about by Jim <laughs> Jim Holden with, with the the dead llamas oh, yeah. that were going on. Yeah, <laughs> we actually had a report from the folks at YouTube and Facebook that there was talk of animal cruelty in there, and we had the to like. Conversation was uncomfortable. I literally had to write a thing that you know. <laughs> The, the llama died naturally. So, spontaneous human, <laughs> oh, really? please do not write anybody. Yeah. No one actually humanly no, combusted. No, we're a bunch he of goofy kids. <laughs> a bunch of nerdy kids playing math metal. You know, <laughs> trying to be crazy. So, you're, you're in a metal band? Oh, yeah. I it mean, was, like, that's hard for me to imagine. It was the heavier, imagine. the better when I was a kid. I mean, if it wasn't, you know. So, I what were know. the bands that you listened to? Well, like, I mean, of course, there's obviously Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer, the big four, and Anthrax. Uh, um, those were huge bands for me um, as far as heavy metal goes and then I got into uh, there's also like Slayer and even um, Acid Bath and stuff like that and of course Rage and Tool and all those sort of sounds I love that stuff and I still love it uh, uh, but you know we still listen to that stuff we do <laughs> Yeah. I know that's not what comes you. out, but so were those were those your, your your bands growing up too, or what um, did you have? Uh, I listened to a lot of that, absolutely. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. We kind of connected early on the fact that we're like old metalheads. Uh, which Black yeah. Sabbath was really good. My dad had a Black Sabbath with, with my dad's here. Oh, my dad here today. Uh, I love dad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they, uh, my dad had a Black Sabbath album in his vinyl collection, and when I first figured out how to use the record player, there was like some really good '50s music compilations and stuff, and then there's a Black Sabbath. With that woman that was that probably set the stage for me as far as like playing heavy metal you know so well we you know i was some... like what is that you know yeah <laughs> i still feel that way sometimes. i was i was just <laughs> i mean everything's all about me i was just thinking about <laughs> like black sabbath my mom playing that that's hilarious that would never happen <laughs> yeah. yeah well that's what I, was, I was gonna say i kind of had to had to sneak those records you know a little bit more, like, yeah your, your family your they were a little more like mine, like turn that down. Yeah, like, I don't need yeah. To. Um, so yeah. we, uh, my, our family music was more like um, uh, country, like classic country music and old stuff. Le you know, Lefty Frizzell and Roy Acuff and all that sort of stuff, and then on mm -hmm. into the Outlaws and and, uh, yeah, like and then and Kitty and, and Loretta. And and that's that's pretty and important to that. note right there because as far as Jamie and I coming together. Even it doesn't sound like heavy metal. Like a lot of stuff that I play, I still try to play with that sort of level of, of intensity. It's still, it all that really crosses, you know, genres from punk rock to bluegrass. From um, if you're doing it right, if you're, there's still that level of intensity in those songs. But what is crazy because I didn't really grow up with real country music. Jamie did, so that really, really marks our sound. Really, and I, I come from like I got into playing bluegrass music, and that's that's where the translation comes together for her and I really. And uh, so you singing more country stuff, mm -hmm. and then there's the hammer and the hatchet. <laughs> I mean that's our yeah. sound, really. <laughs> that explains it. I mean as far as like we write most of our own material. Uh, I started writing songs a long time ago and things, and you know, now we just try to tie it together, don't we? Mm -hmm. So how many records stuff? have you guys done? Two. 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 And what are the names? We got to get them out there for folks. The first one's self-titled, and uh, the second one be Winter Fires. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we Winter Fires was kind of an experiment because um, it's half recorded and um, half live performance, so half studio, half, half live, live um, mm -hmm. which was kind of an experiment. And it's been received really well. Um, that that project came out of a, a winter. We decided to take some time off and polish up some songs we've been working on that were, you know how it is, like, you've got them almost done, and you want to perform them, but they're not <laughs> quite right. Um, so so we took a little time and finished them up, and we had five at the end of that, and then um, we 
we played a show in at the Nashville Playhouse and um, in, in Nashville, Indiana. Uh, yeah, is that actually that's kind of the our Brown County base, Playhouse? Really. Is that what Brown it's County called? Playhouse? That's right. Yeah, and. Um, and and the high school media department actually recorded it and did such a fantastic job and let us know that they had it and so we went ahead and, and added that on to make it a full length project and then our third album is recorded um, but still being uh, mastered and mixed and stuff so. what's your target date for the release oh we don't do that we don't know uh, spring probably spring yeah, well, think, that's good you know yeah 2019 just lets everybody um, know when they can start looking that's like, right we yeah, will have a new right. album in 2019 yes we will sure. and we're, uh, we're going to do some fun stuff because we had so many songs we had uh, gosh what did we record 22 24 yeah, new songs. A bunch of songs way more than we needed um, yeah. but sometimes it's good to just get those things recorded and have a version collected mm -hmm. right and um so now we're kind of going through that tedious work of oh boy which ones fit on this and i i'm excited about this new kind of ability to to drop one song you know this oddball song we'll probably do some early releases or some stuff like that too oh that's neat yeah so are you do you have a like um a theme like are you doing like a i want this certain theme to be part of this record we could we could break you, it up like that i mean really. do you have you don't have that yet or that's a really good question um <laughs> <laughs> i i think i think the the common theme between john and i's songwriting is just we just live an authentic life we work and our family is important to us and and we like to make authentic music and and so we write about stuff we know and then that kind of tends to be how we end up you know everything being cohesive and so what are what are your day so. jobs um, <laughs> are you still doing roofs? I were, no, no. I'm, no, I've gone from roofing to being a union electrician. I did that for a long time. And then when I moved down south to be with Jamie, uh, I got a job uh, working at a private sawmill. And I, I, mill, I help mill Adirondack spruce. It's used to make Martin guitars, bourgeois guitars, pre-war guitars, uppity um, uh, anyway, guitars all over the world. Really, we'll send wood Fancy. wherever make tops we need to and go. Braces. Tops, 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 and brace wood for acoustic guitars. That's right. We make Man. mandolin tops, and I, you, we, I may have something in my in my case over there that you sawed off, right? Maybe, yeah. If it's right. Adirondack spruce, that's true. Yeah. Mm. Wow. And, and you um, saw up wood too, or we got actually. <laughs> Kind of. Yeah, I do. I've been a furniture builder for the last, uh, I don't know, four years uh, steady with Brown County Inn. But uh, we're, we're at, a, I'm kind of at the end of my rope on that right now. So I've been printing shirts. I'm kind of launching off into something else. It's been really exciting. Um, forced by an injury that I, I broke my thumb. And so oh. it's been a long year this year. Um, but we've, we've uh, persevered yeah. through... Yeah. Um, as one who has uh, broken season. many fingers when I was, I used to play football. So, yeah. like, you can see how these are not at all straight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. I, I like you, you said broken thumb. And I was like, oh. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I broke my knuckle this in April. So this yeah, whole a lot year, tougher than I am. I'm just telling everybody. Yeah, right now, this, I this whole year has no, been crazy. Um, trying to fulfill obligations and not book too much yet. Still. You know, um, play good shows, which we have. We've played a lot of good shows this it, year. Was, is it on your right hand or your my left? My left hand. So it's my Friday hand, right? You know. Right. So it's like um, all the pressure. Yeah. Is up yeah. against it. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm actually I've switched uh, guitars this year, a little bit, and that's helped me. Um, I'm still trying to find the perfect solution. like a thinner neck or something. Yeah, yeah. That sort of thing. Yeah. I can understand that. Mm -hmm. Like when you're looking for um, instruments, that is that. Um, you know, uh, just a complete aside from other topics, but uh -huh. uh, when you're looking at, at, at a new instrument, do you think about, you know, um, the feel more or the sound more or... Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure cost is always a factor. Yeah, <laughs> it is with me, but... It sure is. Um, no, I, I'll say that my, my go-to guitar that I've played for the last three years... Um, it was definitely a, a, a sound thing. That guitar sounds fantastic, um, and it's a little bit tough to wrestle, so I think maybe with a, some work I'll, I'll get that back out and play it some more. But um, what's important for me is to sound like a good rhythm player, you know, uh, and, and, and give John a good bass. So um, I think probably the sound is the most important thing. I've wrestled a few that weren't that comfortable. 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> that's probably the safest answer. I got yeah. how, how you feel about it? Uh, tone is pretty important, but for you know somebody just broke their thumb it's like it has to be ergonomically <laughs> correct or she's not like you know so i've had other guitars so i fortunately i've been able to you know say hey you use this guitar instead of that one and see if that works better uh, i'm pretty fortunate to have well i, I, I want to <laughs> add to the different guitars seem to make me play different songs yes they do yeah. you know different yeah. sounds different ways they play they kind of bring different things out in you so for those people that don't understand why we need so many guitars <laughs> oh, i mean i need. yeah you need yeah. The, i mean obviously the difference between like an acoustic and electric guitar should be obvious to everyone right absolutely yeah. but, but a jumbo know. in a parlor yeah they sound different they sound yeah they, I they mean, feel different they, and they make you want to <laughs> make you want to do different stuff yeah. well. I, I i know uh like sometimes i'll pick up one of those little parlor ones that just instantly i'm playing something really country yeah. like yeah. <laughs> maybe that's what for no real me. reason yeah. like it's just like Oh yes, it, this should be that or something. Yeah, I don't know. that's right. That's right. <laughs> but yeah. that matters. I mean, that matters across the board with any instrument. I mean, they all play and feel a little bit different or sound <laughs> different or have kind of their sweet spots maybe. And that's just wood. Wood is completely different. You know, so you never know. He's yeah. know it all now. I know it all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he knows all about the wood. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I knew anything about the wood. Like when I grab it, I grab a hold of it and I'm like, it says Adirondack spruce and this one says rosewood. Hmm. Okay. Don't know what that means. Let me play it and see what it sounds yeah, like. Somebody, like. Use the word That's going to be a, a really more. nice guitar. I'm just going to tell you right now. This is, did very well, dude. That this, has a, this has a very warm sound. Okay. Oh, all right, I mean, like warm. I, I like warm. I like toasty. That's right. Does it have a toasty? Toasty feel, no, or is that or is that the Les Paul? That's got a really toasty feel. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, anyway, you guys want to perform some songs for us we instead of talking to. about it? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 All right, it's great having you on the show. Thanks, Jeff. We're really happy to have you here. Thanks, Jeff. We'll be back in just a minute with some music from Hammer and the Hatchet. Hey everybody, uh, we're the Hammer and the Hatchet, and this is called Tin Foil Rings. Let's watch the moon rise above the hills.
Sometimes it can feel like miles apart in the day. Sometimes it feels like we're joined at the heart. Measure in the thought of each other. This next one we uh, we wrote and we've used it quite a bit for events for uh, Indiana Forest Alliance. It's about logging in Brown County. It's called Ferris Hill Massacre.
give a damn about all the tops you let fall and clog up or holler. Think you've lost your mind. Think you've lost your mind. Think you've lost your mind. teenage daughter and I wrote this song it's called insomnia song you'll get it is a presentation of Not Less Entertainment. Copyright 2018, all rights reserved. Our producer for today's show was Joe Shelton. Our cameraman grip and stunt double was Brent Lee Smith. And also helping out on cameras, setup, and all sorts of other things, Bailey Shelton. Thank you for joining us, and join us next week on Sunday for Moonshine and Music.